Hi everybody. So, and a couple of weeks ago, uh, we started putting up a few pieces of wiring, and today we're continuing with that love. Here we see a big old shipment from Spruce with some wires. Come to find out, I didn't order enough. I'm shocked for the fuselage harness. So so far, all we've really run is a couple of strands of eight. 18 gauge 3 conductor. Let's see. Where is that file? Okay, here it is. I found it. Okay, so let's just go through a laundry list of all the stuff that I'm trying to lay out here. Well, actually what I'm doing is rebundling up some wire because I let it I let it go and fray. Looks like a the backlash of a fishing reel. Okay, so both sides. Both sides are going to have power for nav strobes and for landing and or taxi lights, right? That's for the wing. That's two sets of three conductor 18. Uh, let's see. In the left wing, we also have the pitot heat, so that's two 14 gauge. And you, actually, you'll see me uh, twisting that up here in a little bit because uh, it's a lot of power, and I'd like for that wire to kind of cancel out its own EM field. And that's what you do when you make a twisted pair. But we'll, we'll look at that in a bit. Uh, so yeah, that's all for the left wing. Right wing, well, no, that's not true. The OAT probe is also going to go down the left side because it's going to be sticking out in the bottom of the left wing. The right wing, like I said, power, uh, I'm sorry, nav strobes, landing lights. It's also going to have the CAN bus go down because the magnetometer is out in the right wing tip. Pardon me. And the roll servo is halfway in between, so it's going to be caught by the same CAN bus. i got to have power for each one of those. Uh, the power for the magnetometer is much smaller than one for the roll servo has got to be bigger. I think that's 18 gauge because it supplies direct power for the trim motor. The trim motor is just directly connected to the roll servo. Same in the tail as well. Uh, let's see. What else is there? N nothing's in the right wing other than that, which is good. Appreciate that. Uh, then you've got the tail section, of course, which has the, the, like I said, it's got the pitch, it's got the pitch servo, it's got the trim, it's also got the ELT stuff, and so it's just like, for f**k's sake, how many wires are we going to have in this thing? Naturally, I thought I was done, but I didn't, I didn't have enough. Oh, yeah, yeah, so... One thing that Vans does is Van, Vans has you ground a lot of stuff locally, right? Uh, basically, you know, you run power out to something. Well, you need to have power running back somewhere. you got to have a return line. And Vans just would have you ground everything pretty close to where you're supplying the power. And not that there's anything really wrong with that, but, you know, you can cause some RF signals with that kind of wiring behavior. Now, of course, they wouldn't have you do it unless they knew there was going to be a nominal amount of signal return. And that's perfectly fine, right? Uh, however, I don't want any of those signals. So a lot of stuff that I'm running, or I should say all the stuff I'm running, will all have return lines, right? If power is going out, power will be coming back. The only exceptions for stuff is like the fuel sender. So, oh, it's not fuel sender, but the fuel level sender. So, you know, it's a, when we did the tanks last year, year before, whenever we did them, uh, there's just one wire that hooks up to the fuel level sender, right? Because all that is is a rheostat that just gives you its resistance and says, hey, here's the current resistance of this thing. Uh, and, it, and that's just a sliding scale, right? One being full, zero being empty. Damn it. It's not exactly like that, but that's just an example. So for that, you don't need return power. But everything else that ha uses power will have a return, which is why these things are starting to get, these bundles are getting thick. Yeah, it's a lot. And the, the, the electric, the electricity part, it's it's a little bit intimidating, right? I mean, you see how many wires I'm running here. And, of course, I'm being very smart. Well, I will be being very smart here in a second as I'm going to start taking a lot of that blue tape and labeling all of these wires with exactly what it is it's supposed to be. Now, if I was really smart, I would have done it on both ends, but I didn't because I'm a dumbass. So I'm going to have to go back today and relabel everything. Oh yeah, there's also the CAN bus that goes down to the tail, because that has to catch the pitch uh, servo, which will be the end of that side of the CAN bus, so there's also that. Let's see what else. Oh yeah, 
And I mentioned the microphones and the headphones. Each one of those is a gigantic cable that has to get connected. And that's on both sides. It's a lot, so. But, hey, look. The longer, you know, and of course, I'm not putting this in until I've triple-checked everything. So, I'm just being a very smart, very vigilant builder. Which means it's going to take forever, so. Uh, yeah, in the next video, we're going to be doing some more of this. So, thanks for joining me, and see you soon.